Hi everybody, this is Carlos from Army of Nurses and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss how to write learning goals using the SMART framework. Now, some of the objective of this video is going to be one, just to talk about why nursing students need to write learning goals. Number two, we're gonna discuss the SMART framework itself. Number three, we're gonna provide some examples of learning goals. Now, why write learning goals to begin with? As most of us who have gone through uh, our undergraduate education in nursing, we were required to write learning goals as a way to um, be able to identify what we want to learn within a certain semester. So the learning goals are very individualized and they are pertaining to specifically what you want to learn in that semester, not based on what your teacher or what your classmates want you to learn. So it's about what you want to learn in that semester. Now, learning goals are used in education because they, they enhance the promotion of knowledge transfer from theory into practice. So in a sense, it helps solidify that link between the knowledge that you acquire from your theory classes uh, to the bedside practice when you go for your clinical uh, and practice your nursing skills on real patients. It is a commonly used uh, tool in nursing education uh, the, uh, to set up learning goals to ensure that students, they are on track to meet the outcomes of the nursing curricula. And it helps students engage in self-reflection in their own practices uh, as well. So if you, do, if you have encountered, for instance, a situation in your previous clinical uh you know that it was really meaningful then it actually informs you of how you would be able to interact given the similar situation in the future so it, you can learn uh from situations like that now the smart framework itself consists of five letters and they all make up the word smart s is for specific m is for measurable a is for attainable or achievable R for realistic and T for timely. Specific, what it means is just it, uh, that your goal needs to be very precise. You need to talk about one aspect of your goal. For instance, if you say my goal is to be able to look after patients, okay, as a nursing student, well, that's very general. If you want to say instead, my goal is to be able to look after patients with dementia who are unable to talk uh, then it becomes more specific about the patient population uh, of what kind of goal you're trying to achieve. Measurable, it just means that your goal has to have a, uh, the ability to be evaluated by your teachers objectively. Okay? It means that it, as your teachers or your instructors or even for yourself, you need to be able to quantify it. Um, you cannot just say, well, I feel that I met that goal, for instance. So subjectivity cannot be part of a goal. It needs to be objective. Uh, next is going to be uh, the goal needs to be attainable. Now, by attainable, it means that can you achieve this goal within the allocated resources? And can you achieve, for example, the short-term goals that you have set out? How are the long-term goals? Are this goal achievable? Can you meet this goal before the end of the semester? Are they attainable? Right? So that's what this uh, means. For instance, if you are a semester two nursing student and you have not learned about intravenous therapy, right? Uh, you will not be able to uh, achieve a goal that says, well, I want to learn about IV therapy uh, when you have not learned about it yet. So that goal is not attainable which leads to the next one, which is realistic. And you need to be realistic given your situation and your current settings, and also your current nursing skills. Uh, for example, back, uh, back to the example that we gave uh, earlier, if you have not done IV therapy and you want to learn about IV therapy, but your curriculum is not gonna cover that in that semester, it's unrealistic for you to be able to meet that goal. So, stick to what you're learning within your curriculum in that semester and your current skill levels and your current knowledge as well. Lastly, T is for timely. Uh, we add a time frame to our goals because without a time frame, they do not have a sense of urgency. Now, 
by allocating a time frame, then you give yourself a specific um, a specific goals, a specific uh, time goals for you to meet a certain things. For instance, let's say that your general goal is to be able to administer uh, medications independently uh, via the oral or the subcutaneous route. Then every week, you're going to build up to that goal. So in week two, you're going to achieve this. By week five, you're going to achieve something else. By week eight, you're going to achieve something else. So that by the end of your whole uh, curriculum or your whole semester, you will be able to achieve the initial goal, the general goal that you set up, which, are, which is to be able to administer the medications using subcutaneous or whatever other route that you want that you decide to do. Uh, let's look at another example here. So you are an RN training uh, to work in the ICU. And this is the goal that you're going to set up. And this goal is smart. So you say that you want to learn and understand how to use, mix, and administer norepinephrine, which is a medication to help increase blood pressure uh, in the ICU for patients suffering from shock. So you're specifically saying what kind of patient you want to uh, focus that on by week three of your training. So you're already setting a time frame for that. So this goal is specific because it focuses on norepinephrine that you want to learn about. It focuses on the ICU and patients suffering from shock. So you're not looking at all the different patients in the ICU. And again, you're looking at the ICU and you're not looking at all the patients in the hospital, right? So it's very specific. Measurable. Uh, for example, in this, in this example, would be it is measurable because you can say that I will be able to identify the mechanism of action of norepinephrine, for instance. I will be able to distinguish between a peripheral dose and a central dose. I will be able to titrate norepinephrine to a desired blood pressure parameters. So I can definitely evaluate you if you know the mechanism of action of norepinephrine, for instance. I can actually evaluate if you know the difference between a peripheral dose and a central dose or how to mix them. And I can definitely evaluate you to see if you know how to use norepinephrine based on parameters. So it's definitely measurable because as an instructor, or a teacher, I can definitely objectively evaluate if you have met those goals. Now attainable. Uh, can this goal be attainable? Yes, given the, uh, our circumstances, because remember it is, uh, in, the, in this example, we are an RN training in the ICU. So because it is an expectation of ICU nurses to have the knowledge to, uh, of medications for blood pressure, what we call inotropes and vasopressors. Uh, so these medications are used to treat low blood pressure. So we have to know these medications in the ICU. So if you are training in this environment, it is definitely attainable, this goal. Now, that, which leads to the next one. Is it realistic? Yes, again, because as a nurse training in the ICU, titration of blood pressure drugs is a fundamental and foundational skill. Uh, however, if you start thinking about this goal might not be attainable, for instance, if you are a uh, RPN nursing student or an undergraduate nursing student, for instance, because you do not get placements in the ICU, at least in Ontario, Canada, where I'm from, uh, RPN students, for instance, they do not go into the ICUs. Uh, and therefore, ICU therapists, they are not taught in their curriculum. As a result, it's not realistic for them to set out a goal like this. Okay, uh, and last but not least, timely. Uh, as we can see, uh, we have set up that by week three, we're gonna be able to learn how to use, mix, and administer. So on a timely base, it will look something like this. On week one, I will look up information about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics or norepinephrine. Good. On week two, I will be able to mix norepinephrine uh, for peripheral or central administration according to a, uh, the available vascular access. So if they have a peripheral IV, we're going to do a peripheral dose. And if they have a central line, we're going to do a, a central uh, dose. And on week three, I will be able to titrate or adjust the dose of norepinephrine based on prescribed blood pressure parameters. As you can see, every week I'm building on my previous knowledge until I get to the end, which is going to be to be able to use, mix, and administer the norepinephrine. Okay, now let's look at some non-ICU examples here. 
Now, these are some examples that I see every semester from students uh, in all practices, uh, in even for new uh, new grads. Uh, in example number one, for instance, it says, as a nursing student, I want to learn to assess my patients properly by the end of the semester. I will review my notes, practice, and watch uh, videos on YouTube. Every week, I will add to my learning by practicing and asking my clinical instructor. I will know that I have achieved this goal when I feel confident about my skills. So as you can see, this, uh, this learning goal is very general. Uh, it doesn't give me any specific time frame of how you're going to build up to this goal. And you feeling confident about your skills, there's no real, real way for me to assess that. So it's, uh, this goal is not smart. So let's switch this goal into a smart goal. And it will read something like this. As a nursing student, I want to learn to perform a full head-to-toe physical assessment on my patient by the end of this semester without aid. By week four, I will be able to completely, uh, sorry, to competently complete a cardiovascular and respiratory assessment. Okay, we start with the cardiorespiratory. By week six, I will be able to competently add on the neurological assessment on top of the cardiovascular respiratory. Great. By week eight, I will be able to integrate the uh, gastrointestinal and genital urinary system. And by week 10, I will be able to perform the full assessment, including all the systems. Now, I will review my lecture notes assignments and textbooks, what, whatever chapter numbers for guidance. I will look up scholarly articles on CINAHL pertaining to physical assessment. For those of you who are not familiar with CINAHL, it stands for the Cumulative Index of Nursing and Ally Health Literature. It's a database for scholarly articles. Um, I will look up health assessment videos on YouTube and refer to them as needed. I will practice performing assessments on my family members or friends. I will know I have achieved or met this goal by successfully performing a return demonstration for my clinical instructor. So as you can see, this goal have made it smart. It's specific in the sense that it's about the head to toe assessment and it breaks it down specifically that it builds up on the assessment. It builds up. We start with cardiovascular, then we start adding on the other system. And by the end, you will be able to achieve the whole goal, which is to do a whole head to toe from all the systems. Uh, the resources that you're going to use, like, as we can see over here, they're very specific. Your lecture notes, your textbook, whatever chapter it is for guidance. Uh, you're using CINAHL. You're telling me specifically what database you're going to use. Uh, and when you look up YouTube videos, you're also telling me that your YouTube videos are going to be health assessment related uh, YouTube videos as opposed to videos uh, in general. And uh, one way for me to evaluate this as an instructor is you say at the very end that you're going to be able to perform a return demonstration for, uh, for your instructor or your teacher, right? So that's one way for your teacher to see, yes, you know, the, uh, the return demonstration has been successful. Therefore, I can see that you have completed this goal. So it gives the uh, evaluator or even yourself an objective way to uh, evaluate uh, to make sure you have met that goal. Another example here. Uh, the weak example here, the non-smart uh, version, it reads, As a second semester nursing student, my goal is to learn about the role of other disciplines by the end of the semester. I will shadow members of the interdisciplinary uh, team throughout the semester to learn their routine. I will read my nursing fundamentals textbook, ask my clinical instructor, and interact with other staff. I will know that I would have achieved this by meeting with other interdisciplinary team members and doing a presentation about them. So again, this goal is very general, right? And it doesn't give me any time frames of what you're going to achieve in a progressive way to get to that goal. So let's turn this goal into a smart goal. And it will read something like this. As a second semester nursing student, my goal is to learn about respiratory therapists and the role they fulfill in the team. By week two, I will read my textbook, whatever chapter, uh, to learn about the role of RTs. By week four, I will ask my instructor to pair me with an RT uh, for a few hours and to shadow and to get the sense of their role. By week eight, I will have the knowledge to distinguish between nasal cannulas, simple face mask, and venturi mask. Very specific. Uh, by week 12, I will be able to perform a comprehensive respiratory assessment, including chest percussion. Again, very specific. By week 15, I will have the knowledge to titrate oxygen delivery to keep 
an SpO2 or an oxygen saturation greater than 95%. And an indicator that I have achieved this goal will be to do a short presentation to my clinical instructor and my classmates to demonstrate what I learned about the roles of RT and the differences between nasal cannula, face mask, and venturi. Again, in this example, we have made it smart. We are very, being very specific about what who in the interdisciplinary team we're going to focus on. And in this case, we, we chose respiratory therapists. Uh, we outline every week how we're going to progress towards this role. And in the end, you're giving me a way to evaluate that, which is you're going to do a presentation for your classmates or for your clinical instructor. And you're going to talk about what you learn about the nasal cannulas, the face mask and the venturi masks. So you're providing very specific and also a very objective way to be evaluated. So this is a good smart goal. Uh, I hope that this has helped some of the students at least shed some light of how to build a SMART goal or at least how not to write uh, learning goals. Um, this is all for this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.